a five-year sentence. He'll spend between eight and ten months behind bars at least. Uh, uh, South African Paralympic star Oscar Pistorius sentenced in Pretoria after a trial that captivated not only South Africa, but the whole planet. We'll naturally ask if the Take punishment fits the crime the some, after a culpable homicide conviction for the shooting death of uh, his girlfriend Riva Steenkamp through a locked bathroom door. We'll see the darker side of the man nicknamed Blade Runner, a sporting hero who'd earned the right to compete with able-bodied athletes at the Olympics. But it also raises broader issues about South Africa's gun culture. And even though Pistorius claims he thought Steenkamp was an intruder, that nation's high rate of domestic violence. Also, at a time when several American football players are also in the spotlight for their off-the-field behavior, it broaches the question of the public's hunger for role models and the standards to which they are held. Today, in the France 24 debate, we're looking at the sentencing of Oscar Pistorius. With us from Cape Town, her latest novel, Water Music, Margie Orford, the uh, president of the South African branch of the prestigious Worldwide Writers Pen Club. Thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate. Uh, here in the studio, Paris-based South African rapper and DJ Mo Lauder. Thank you for being with us. Uh, thanks as well to Pauline Arigui, spokesperson for uh, the women's rights group Oser le Feminisme. I guess yeah. you translate as Dare Feminism. Dare to be a feminist. Dare to Dare be a feminist. feminist. There you go. And attorney Fabien Hinker, who uh, among uh, your works is looking at the relationship between violence and sports. Maybe we can talk about that a, a, a little bit later on. Sure. The France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and on Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. During his trial, an emotional Oscar Pistorius at time broke down. This Tuesday, um, he uh, was calm and collected as he was taken away to prison. Kedavan Gorgistani has the story. Mr. Pistorius, please rise. A fair and just sentence both to society and the accused. That's how Judge Masipa qualified her sentencing in the Oscar Pistorius trial. The double amputee Olympian was sentenced to five years in prison for killing his girlfriend Riva Steenkamp last year. Her family was relieved the seven-month trial was over and welcomed the sentence. He could be out after just a, a year or so. Doesn't matter, he's going to pay something. Do you think justice has been served? Yes. Historius killed Steenkamp on Valentine's Day after shooting her through a toilet door in his home, but claimed he mistook her for an intruder. Last month, Pistorius was convicted of culpable homicide, but not of murder, a decision that many want to see overturned, including the ruling ANC Party's Women's League. The state prosecuting authority is considering an appeal. Pistorius's uncle criticized prosecutors for trying to make a premeditated murder charge stick, but said his family could now move on. The court has now handed down judgment and sentence, and we accept the judgment. Oscar will embrace this opportunity to pay, to pay back to society. Pistorius was immediately escorted to a holding cell, but the athlete may not spend much of his sentence behind bars. He could be eligible for house arrest in less than a year. Uh, Margie Orford, was this the right sentence? Um. There are a couple of commentators in South Africa have said that the sentence was right for the conviction of culpable homicide. I think where the main question has been is um, whether he should have been found guilty of only culpable homicide. It was possible for the judge to have given him a much longer sentence for culpable homicide, but she weighed up in her very measured and considered way um, custodial sentence um, with uh, a rehabilitative sentence, so a shorter sentence. You know, I think this sort of my own feeling was that the crime that he committed, the culpability, the carelessness with which he shot at Riva, the grouping of the bullets around the door, spoke to extreme negligence. And I would have preferred to see a harsher sentence, I must say. But Having said that, the judges call for an idea of mercy and of uh, rehabilitative, restorative justice was, in a way, I suppose, kind of refreshing after so much um, sordidness, so much violence, so much um, 
all the stuff that we've seen on display in the Pistorius trial and with all the other trials of women that are killed. So I, I can't decide. I mean, the judgment was so clear, but the sentence to me seemed extremely light. Five years, he will serve one-sixth of that sentence before he comes up for parole, so he could be back on the streets in 10 months. Molari, do you agree? Yes. Yes, definitely. I think um, grow, having grown up in South Africa, I see that we we much more used to crime, and so people tend to go to the extremes and guns are everywhere. So with a sentence like that, and he's going to be even less than 10 months in jail. I think he should have been longer. Should have been longer. How about you, Fabian? Well, it's pretty hard to answer this question straightforward because uh, there has been a judge who has studied all the, the elements of this case and they found him guilty of uh, culpable homicide which is not a murder, which is not a murder with uh, premeditation. So as long as it is this qualification of crime who has been, um, who has been uh, used by the judge, the sentence is quite severe for this kind of... Uh, of uh, for, for a it's the, the equivalent of manslaughter. Exactly. For, for this kind of, um, of offense, it's, uh, it's quite severe. For murder, of course, it's not. Yeah, I was just... Uh, I just don't want to raise a point because um, I went to... The, the same school, and um, there was a point in my life where we were very influenced by violence in South Africa as a teenager because there was violence um, so the same school, The same school as... Yes, Oscar. As Oscar, Oscar Pistorius. Pistorius. He was a lot years behind. But um, somehow, as a black kid in the township, you get caught up in this uh, violence. And then there was a time when we were breaking into houses, and it, it was just kind of for the fun of it, you know. And But some people, most of the population was not for the fun because violence is quite prevalent in South Africa. So to shoot someone and kill someone, even though it's for self-defense, just because they're a burglar, I don't see that as a... Um, does does it justifiable? Does yeah. it does it surprise you? I know that <clears throat> people live in gated communities in a lot of places, no, and that's that's the situation in South Africa where violence is so everywhere. Uh, you, you carry a gun, you're prepared to kill someone just for someone trying to take your car, trying to take your wallet, trying to get into your house. You have an excuse to shoot someone to death. That's not right. I, I, can I just can I just come in there? Sure, go ahead, Margie. Um, firstly, a culpable homicide is an extremely serious offense. It can take, um, you can get a sentence up to 15 years, even 20 years. That, as far as I understand it, is up to the discretion of the judge. It's not murder, but it's not at all an insignificant um, offense. And the reasoning around her sentencing was very interesting. It wasn't saying this was... Um, a, a, a minor act. It was saying this was a very serious crime. He was grossly negligent. Her decision around the light, you know, the sort of short custodial sentence was very considered around the concept of South Africa's constitution and the idea of restorative justice. The other thing that I think is, for me, which got uh, left out, and it's something that I've written about, and the person who was speaking before, it's difficult to know your names because I can't see your faces. Mo Laudi. But, Mo Laudi. Yeah, you were talking about this, this fear and the fear of crime. It's very important to remember that in the gated community where Pistorius lived, no other crime, violent crime, had taken place at all until he shot Riva Steenkamp. And for me, one of the things that was not examined by um, in the sentencing or in the, the judge's um, verdict when she found him guilty was this claim to this amorphous fear Absolutely. of crime that's everywhere. That is not true. I mean, mm. I'm also a South African. I write about crime all the time. And many, often white people, will claim this fear to terror of crime. Therefore, any action is justified. And that, to me, is something that went, unfortunately, unexamined as to what the origins of that fear is why Pistorius and other South Africans like him feel it's reasonable to get up in the night and start Rambo shooting in your own home. You know, there's, there's a, it's where that sort of paranoid fear and the violence that it comes with it 
has come to be seen as normal. And that, to me, is highly dangerous. And the problem I had with the shortness of the sentencing is that there are many crimes committed like that. The judge cited two other cases, one in which a man shot his domestic worker's grandson, another one where a man shot his wife, both accidentally. Those two people and Riva Steenkamp would have been alive if those men had been able to deal with this fear, with this anxiety, and if they hadn't been armed. I mean, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. ubiquity of weapons is one of the most dangerous things for women, especially. Uh, this is a male pattern violence, I'm afraid to say. All right, Mar Margie Orford, that, that broaches a question that's been put to us by one of the viewers, Lavrock, on Twitter, asking, what if he wasn't famous? What if he wasn't white? I'll put it to you, uh, Mo Laudy. Yeah, that's, that's exactly the situation where if he wasn't that famous, if he wasn't white, he would have got a harsher sentence. And that's how it is because of his background and he has more privilege than most people. So the, even the judge and the society will see him in a different light. I want to get back to the original point that Margie made at the beginning, which was wasn't so much the length of the sentence, but the conviction that troubled her, the fact that it was a manslaughter conviction, not a murder conviction. Well, I won't comment on the judgment because I'm not a judge, but I will comment, what I will comment on is that it's a very typical case of what happens in a very broad scale, is that masculine violence uh, kills women at a very broad scale. And what is also typical about this case is that it was not acknowledged as um, domestic violence, as masculine violence against women. Uh, we have testimony by his ex-girlfriend who said that he was violent to her, that he was very possessive, very jealous. Yeah, he had he, a past history. He locked her up, uh, he beat her. Uh, so he is a machist and he killed his wife because of his machist mentality and behavior. And this was not ac acknowledged. And um, uh, still, it's very typical and it doesn't happen only in South Africa or in Europe. It's, it happens in the, in the whole world. And it is the first, the leading cause of death for women in the world between 16 and 44 years old. Um, a comment coming in uh, from mm. Sandeep, who agrees with you. He says they need to appeal for a higher sentence. This man is dangerous. Should his past history uh, with his previous girlfriend have been an issue at the trial? Can you bring that kind of thing up uh, from a legal perspective? Of course, this should have been taken into consideration. But his wife uh, herself, she... His fiancée. She, she, his fiancée, she, she defended him uh, in, a, in a prior case. But this should have been taken in, into consideration earlier because, uh, as you said, the main issue behind this is also the violence against women. And uh, there is a very high uh, crime rate in, in South Africa of rape, of violence, but also in other countries. In France, every three days a woman... Uh, die of domestic violence. So if it's, it's a worldwide problem. And this should have been taken into consideration for the case, but also for the fact that he was carrying weapon. So they should have taken this into consideration. The only reason what I say before that the sentence was not so, um, was quite severe is that it's quite weird, the sentence, or he was in a self-defense position and the sentence could have been even less, or he wasn't. And personally, I believe it's pretty hard to, to pretend that you are in a self-defense position if you shoot at a toilet door without seeing anything. And in this case, he should have been found guilty of murder. And of course, the sentence should have been uh, um, harder. Should, should have been harder. Uh, certainly outside of the courthouse, uh, a lot of folks after hearing of that sentence uh, said uh, they too wanted it to be much stiffer. We want Oscar to be to go to prison for 15 years. He killed somebody and what what. That's that's our moral views. But looking at in an eye of the, of the law, I think it is fair. Riva's family is in great pain. It should have been more harsh. I came inside there. There's a lot of gangsters and stuff. So a day in in, in prison or six months in prison can. It's, 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 an, it's another life that anybody doesn't know about when you're on the streets. It's a very crucial life inside there. And at the end of the day, he must still go on with his conscience. All right. Uh, th there you heard some of the, the voices outside the courtroom. The presiding judge conceding that sometimes there is no appropriate sentence when you weigh all the factors. Here's uh, what she gave as her reading of the situation. Fortunately, regardless of the level of understanding, 
among the general public, South Africa has a constitution which applies to everyone and which protects everyone, including those who, trans who transgress the laws. As a country, we have a long, we have long moved from dark ages. That is the era of, I quote, an eye for an eye, close quote, to a modern era of balancing all the relevant factors. Uh, do you agree with what she just said, Margie Orford? Um, as I said earlier, I was very much in two minds. I mean, South Africa, anyone who's familiar with South Africa knows that we have one of the most violent histories, which in many ways explains the current violence. We had a very militarized society. Our police, up until 1994, operated pretty much like a paramilitary police force like you have in South America and those uh, dictatorships there. So the idea of justice as something restorative is still um, a notion that's alien to, to many South Africans. To me as well, I mean, it was, um, it's an idea I've had to adjust to that justice could be used to do something other than punish. And as I was listening to the judge this morning, I thought that she made a profoundly valuable intervention. Whether people will accept it or agree with it, I don't know. But her putting forward that the idea of mercy and inclusion and restoration is a higher principle, this sort of super ego if you like, of our constitution. What you see with Pistorius and men like Pistorius, he's not alone in this reaction. And I agree completely with your panelists about the, the problem with not seeing this as a domestic violence case. It's, a, in my view, a classic femicide case, but it wasn't read that way. But she did bring up something that perhaps is of great importance, is to how you shift an extremely violent and aggressive society towards one which includes notions of mercy and forgiveness, um, that includes the idea of uh, restoration. The reality of the number of murders and intimate murders in South Africa speak against that. But strangely enough, South Africa is a country that made itself out of, up out of imagining an ideal and often living up to it. Um, in some ways, the, the televising of that trial, Oscar Pistorius, of course, is very famous and a celebrity and, you know, it looked a little bit like um, a TV reality show. On the other hand, how a court works, and this was on its best behavior, was also demonstrated. So I think perhaps as we think through the judgment and, and what it meant with Judge um, Mapisa using that idea of mercy and restorative justice rather than retributive justice is perhaps something that's painful to reflect on, but maybe that is a way towards healing you, other than this very punitive form of justice. I don't you, know. you see I the mean, point. Uh, we're going to pick up on that point, Margie, when we, when we come back. We're going to have to take a very quick break. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate.